I'm a warrior, a black rider. I ride for blackness just like a cider. I'm a warrior, a black rider. I ride for blackness just like a cider. Like a cider. K-Line is a warrior. Like you Huey Newton. K-Line is a warrior, a warrior. I'm a warrior, a black rider. I ride for blackness just like a cider. And Huey P and Bobby Steele Just to let you know that this is real We are the true protectors of black Caskets made for our bones and our ashes And you're ready that the enemy not Your own black family, that's the enemy's plot I ride on the system, try to brutalize us Back in the past, they try to neutralize us They try to do anything to divide us Kill our leaders and try to hide us But riders don't die, we multiply At night, look up, black holes the sky Black riders on my soldiers rise Keep your head to the sky and your soul will rise I'm a warrior, a black rider I ride for blackness just like a cider I'm a warrior, a black rider I ride for blackness just like a cider Like a cider K-Line is a warrior Like Huey Newton K-Line is a warrior A warrior I ride for my people Never so crack the effect is evil Don't let it defeat you I ride for intelligence Cause ignorance is hell But knowledge and wisdom is heaven Then I ride for my comrades My sisters and brothers die for each other During enemy combat I ride on the crook of police That kill Craig Heard ain't show no grief I ride on the shitty cop That killed Sean Bell And gave him 50 shots I ride for black unity Cause I'm tired of really lynching niggas in my community I ride for liberation Cause every person deserves to be free In every nation I ride if you ride with me Die for you if you die for me That's true Colorado I'm a warrior, a black rider I ride for blackness just like a cider I'm a warrior, a black rider I ride for blackness like a cider, like a cider. K-Line is a warrior. I'm a black like Huey Newton. K-Line is a warrior, a warrior. I ride with the truth, ride with the youth. Yeah. Ride if they shoot, yeah. any of my troops. Yeah. I ride for a truth yeah. to unite gang. Yeah. If only we have a productive yeah. aim. Black yeah. destruction's here, oh. we have to fight against it. Fight it's against a productive, the enemy relentless. Yeah. He's ready to kill us any second. Oh. We need protection. We are the weapon, fighting against oppression. They say they killed the panther, but with the resurrection, here to make a wretched. Right now, the death is of my people. I'm here to bring life and peace too. But if they try to take my life, I got the peace too. I would defend myself with the heat too. All my riders, don't let them defeat you. Live my generation, power to the people. I'm a warrior, a black rider. I ride for blackness just like a cider. I'm a warrior, a black rider. I ride for black, it's just like a cider, like a cider. K-Line is a warrior, like you Huey Newton. K-Line is a warrior, a warrior. You are now tuned in to Panther Power Radio with the Black Riders of Liberation Party under the leadership of General Taco. I'm going to introduce the other hosts, and we're going to get into these updates. Black Power, this is Foley. Black Power. Black Power family. This is Eda West, Minister of Public Relations of Black Riders of Liberation Party. Calling live and direct out of Oakland, California, enforcing the rules of the game. That's a greater altitude of mind elevation. Let's get it popping. What's happening? Power. Whoa. Power. So we're going to get into these updates right now. Now, Black over the weekend. Black now, over the weekend. 
What's one more time, sister. One more time. Introduce yourself, sister. I'm sorry. No disrespect, brothers. Um, this is Comrade Mallory. I'm calling out of South Carolina. What's up, Black Riders? Mm-hmm. Black Power. Soldiers of Solidarity to you, sister. How you doing? Respect, King. I'm well. Yeah. So we're gonna get into these updates now. Over the weekend, we had the pigs, the chief of every pig department around the world, come to Chicago for a seminar at the McCormick Place, and they was up in Chicago because of training CPD, the Chicago Pig Department, on new tactics, new military torture tactics. So there was a protest held, and it was over 100 demonstrators, and we marched from the headquarters down to the corner place. It was a beautiful sight to see the brothers and sisters and everybody in unison come together to fight for justice. So, to briefly get into what took place, like I said, we marched from the police headquarters, these pigs headquarters, and I've never been in front of a police headquarters where it smelled like pig ass and old chitlin, but it did. It doesn't even hit nor there. So, we marched, and of course, so we were met with, let's just say they did not take it serious. It was laughter, it was jokes being made. One pig looked like Santa Claus. I mean, it was it was beautiful. It was structured. It was organized. But, of course, they wouldn't let us go nowhere near the McCormick Place for security reasons. And so there was a standoff between us protesters and the pigs and as much as they wanted to laugh and kind of downplay what was going on, you could tell the looks began to change as they understood the severity of what was happening. We're not going to keep taking the shit from them, keep lying down and letting them whoop our ass because that's what's been going on. We've been letting them whoop our ass. We've been seeing our fellow brothers and sisters getting our ass whooped by these pigs and they understanding that at some point the people are going to fight back. With the so-called animals that you claim that we are, you you have to worry about our animals because we're talking about the the all the ch- chief of police being in Chicago or AKA Chirac. Now, what we're trying to do out here is take the term Chirac and turn it into a revolutionary front, so that all the street warriors, all the warriors that's out here and is living under the American code can actually live under the revolutionary code come together. They understand this to happen. And because they did so, they shut it down before more and more people started to gather. And to kind of give everybody an update, Thursday from 4 to 7, Nabby Fifth and Dan Ryan, there is a store ran by the Arabians who like to call black women hoes and bitches and niggers. So Thursday from 4 to 7, 95th Dan Ryan in Chicago, Illinois, we're going to be protesting that store and how it handles its customers. And it's weird that the Arabians will sit here and call our brothers and sisters, call our sisters, I should say, hoes, bitches, niggers, and even threats of physical violence. You call yourself a man, and you're actually threatening a woman who's just trying to shop with you. Why? I don't know. So Thursday, 95th Dan Ryan, Chicago, Illinois, be there, 4 to 7. Black Power. Black Power, Black Power. This leader coming from Detroit, and just the uh, – reiterate what Brother Foley was saying. We don't want nobody to buy shit from these kind of places. We need to stop patronizing these kind of places. We need to show them that we do got the economic power to shut their ass down until they can respect us and respect our minds or either get the hell out and move on to a different location. We don't want that kind in here, not in our community. So it's fine time we start patronizing them kind of stores, black power. Black power. 
Black power, yes, indeed. See, it's one thing to shop with people who's going to treat you like a human being to be dehumanized by folks of the ethnic background, like the Arabians, like the whites. Anybody who disrespects the black woman or the black man do not need our business. They do, they do not need our money. Hell, we should not even be trying to patronize, fuck with them, associate our with them or nothing like that. They do not respect us. They do not care for the fact that many of our brothers and sisters have not only done them wrong, but given them reason to disrespect us. That's not an excuse because there's not one woman on this planet who's a bitch or a hoe. And just because we black don't make us niggas. Now you're going to keep calling us niggas and you're going to get chin checked. Black power. Black Power, this is Tom and Mallory, and I just want to uh, piggyback on what the brother said. We need to take this seriously. Um, we're, it's not like back in the days where, um, you know, we don't have no money and we're working with scraps. Um, I understand there's an income cap that uh, us as black folks um, can We can't reach a certain amount because of the oppression that we are uh, under in America and all over the world. But um, the money that is being made is being spent on unnecessary stuff. It's being, it's being spent on nigger technology. Um, and that phrase, if people don't understand what that phrase means, nigger technology is something that looks good but don't do nothing for you. It don't do nothing for you. It has nothing of value. And actually, it might cost a penny to make in another country, and they charge you $500, $500 in this country um, to get it from you. Um, the thing about it is black people, we bust our ass. Um, I know I bust my ass. And uh, we need to take that seriously because not only are we making these corporations rich, which uh, we're making the 1% even richer, but we're taking from us. Um, instead of buying Jordans and stuff like that, how about putting that money together and buying land? Um, in the South, I see a lot of property. This property, if we was to all unite and put our Jordan money together and put our iPhone money together and put our Michael Kors money together, we can own some shit. But because everybody is on this individualism and materialism, we're not getting nowhere. So, um, you know, you need to be about it. And, and also with um, supporting black business. I'm all for supporting black business, but when you're supporting black business, make sure that black business owner is A, putting back into his community is D, not making a corporation rich. Okay, um, we have a lot of, I hear a lot of people complaining, well, um, I shop black, but where's my black money going? They don't see anything going back into the community. We need that. We need to have faith in, these, in, in ourselves and in our brothers and sisters. How do we do that? When we do have these businesses and we're working with each other, let them see you do something for the community. You know, um, for, the, for the brothers and sisters who celebrate these holidays, show the community some love. You know what I'm saying? You asking them for their hard work and money. Let them, let them, feel, let, let them feel appreciated, okay? Um, because when they go into these, into these corporation stores and stuff like that, it's very cold. How they make you feel like you something is buying a name brand. We don't want that. We want something genuine. We want them to feel love when they mess with another black person, another, uh, you know, another black person or a black um, business owner. So overall, basically what I'm trying to say is uh, let's, let's be about it. Let's stop making people like Michael Kors rich. Let's stop making Jordan rich. Let's stop it. It's not doing nothing for us. As a, as, as a people, it's not doing nothing for us but digging us a deeper hole, black power. Black power, black power. That was um, some very vital, uh, important points that you touched on, sis. Um, it was very important. Um, the comrades will bring that information and put um, these avaricious uh, businessmen on point, cause you know, on, on blast, cause uh, these are enemies of the people. This is the enemies of the black community. You know what I'm saying? So uh, straight, up, straight forward, forever forward, straight ahead, like Matulu taught us. You know what I'm saying? We got more updates, man. Out here in California, we have a a black L.A. pig by the name of Lamarck Lamarck Ferguson. 
he suing the city, um, alleging that he was retaliated against after complaining that a peckerwood pig wrongly followed and stopped him as he drove off, uh, drove off duty through the through the area of South Los Angeles. Um, in the lawsuit that he's filing, he states that he told the officer that he worked for the LAPD and he showed him the police identification. Uh, the officer said he needed to verify his employment because so-called gang members down here in this area are known to um, impersonate uh, LAPD. So um, the black pig by the name of Ferguson, he initiated a personal complaint um, against this officer or overseer, better, better, better stated. Uh, after the complaint was initiated, he was transferred to another division and put on desk work. Um, and this is complete retaliation for him even opening his mouth against another pig. Um, the pig department in L.A. also initiated a personal complaint against him, saying that he made false statements to internal affairs investigation, investigators. For those who aren't hip to what internal affairs are, internal affairs are the other pigs that are supposed to um, investigate the other pigs, but what they really do is they give a heads up to the pigs that people are um, unsatisfied with their conduct. So it really don't do no difference. Um, when it comes to this, all I can say is, you know what I'm saying, a lawsuit ain't really going to do it. Uh, you're dealing with a criminal, criminal justice system. I said a criminal, criminal justice system. Um, you may be a pig, but to them you're still a nigga. Um, a real divine justice in God's law and order is reward for the righteous and punishment for the unrighteous. It's reward for the righteous and punishment for the unrighteous. And this capitalist, corrupt, criminal, criminal justice system, justice means reward for the rich and punishment for the poor. That's what, ju that's what law and order means in this capitalist justice system. Um, and if you ain't got the guap for a good lawyer, then you fucked. On top of that, when you black, it really, you really, really, you twice doomed. Um, the, uh, the, the Dred Scott decision in 1857 Supreme Court exposes that, the, um, that they believe that blacks have no right that a white man is bound to respect. So um, what, I, what we believe is if you want justice, uh, you might want to follow Christopher Dorner's example, um, Black Power. Power. Just to give a couple of quick updates and a couple of stories about what's going on here in the East. <clears throat> uh, update on the Flint water crisis. We've been calling the water crisis for a couple of weeks now, but as of the October the 2nd, it's been officially declared a uh, public health crisis. And for those of you who do not know much about the water um, system or, have it, or just tuning in, um, in April of 2014, Flint decided to save money by cutting out Detroit and and using water from the uh, river, their, their own particular river. And due to this, due to this going on, um, thousands of kids and, and adults have been sticking by the water and not able to drink this water. So it's been a crisis, but as I said, it's just not been called a crisis. Um, U.S. Rep. Rep. Dan Kilby, he decided that he's going to discuss the demand for a federal investigation by the residents of Flint, and he's going to do that on the 28th, I think that's tomorrow, with a, a so-called telephone town meeting, and I'm going to say that loosely. You're going to discuss giving the people a uh, investigation, a federal investigation. So this man... This U.S. rep, he doesn't even take the time out to come out and, and discuss this in person with the residents so that he can see up and close and personal about these people. And and it's a border crisis that's going on. Um, and another story about it, the Leanne Smith, the chief of the Department of Environmental Quality Drinking Water, she's been reassigned, so this is their way of trying to fix the situation when the situation should have been fixed a long time ago. Dan Wyant, the director of Michigan Department of Environmental and Quality, blames the staff members for the handling and the lax rules governing how the water was initially tested uh, tested before it was released to the public. 
Governor Snyder, however, is doing, he's now addressing it by doing a quote unquote third party investigation. And this is and also buying water filters to put inside the school. So when you when the kids in and Flint go to school, they don't even have proper water to drink. Um, he also is calling himself handling this situation by offering the residents free water, um, free water testing. But who testing for what? We know the water, all of the water is fucked up. Um, in other news, we got the two Detroit police. Officers were arrested on federal charge, felony charges for confiscating money from a civilian back in March of 13, and for trying to for lying and fabricating evidence against another another um, person that they were arresting. We'll see how that goes later on. So I hope to kind of update y'all. These officers' names are Charles Lyman and Chancellor Kirby, and they both come from the Tactical Response Unit. And that's just the face of DPD. So not only is our public officials stealing, however, the boys in blue is stealing from the residents as well. Black power. Black power. Black power. Black power. Black power. Uh, go ahead, sister. Um, Black power. This is Mallory from um Farnsworth, South Carolina. I'm calling in about uh that um coward ass pig. Um, who slammed that teenage girl in Richland, um, South Carolina. Um, first of all, let me say fuck all cops, fuck the system, fuck America. But um, fuck the Peckerwood because he's a punk ass for um, slamming his girl. Um, for whatever reason, since he wasn't the girl's parent, he was not you no know, kin to the girl. He should have never had any kind of dealings with the girl. Uh, uh, the girl um, was sitting in her seat, actually, um, she was she was not in a threatening pose or anything like that. So I'm wondering what they're gonna say if he was in fear of his life, which is bullshit. But um, what's happening what's happening now with the case is that um he's actually saying that he has a black girlfriend that he's not a racist. Um. He has been uh, dating an African American for some time now, so he doesn't understand why people um, are, are labeling him a racist. Um, as of right now, um, the sheriff is not taking any calls. Uh, me and a couple of other comrades have tried to contact the sheriff to request that uh, Ben Field be uh, terminated for his excessive use of force on a minor child, um, which we are being sent straight to voicemail now. Um, basically, uh, the sheriff did not release the footage, but um, someone from the class did on Facebook. Um, everyone is very disturbed, and as of right now, um, nothing is being done with the cops. Uh, Basically, um, they, uh, basically, what I'm getting is that the student teacher, the, the administrator at the school, and the Pecklewood believe that they were acting appropriately. So um, as details arise in this, um, in this situation, I will keep my comrades and my brothers and sisters out there updated. Black power. Like power, Black does he have his family? You heard what she said. That's right out there. That's uh, Spring Valley High School, man, out there in South Carolina. It's a 13-year-old girl, brutally beaten, swung, dragged like a rag doll by a peck of wood pig while she was in class for no apparent reason. You know what I'm saying? And they got the footage floating around, and it's going, it's, it's on the net. It's going viral. But obviously, as you can see, if y'all haven't seen the footage yet, go check it out. You can type up the Spring Valley High School um, Police 13-year-old. You can just type it up. You'll find it because it's going viral. And they're actually showing how the forces of fascism is flexing on us. And the question is, you know what I'm saying, what we going to do about it? You know what I'm saying? And what we going to do, we going to raise this consciousness through action. And set up and then set an example to the people that we ain't gonna put up with this shit. You know what I'm saying? We gotta defend ourselves. We must equip and arm our people with combat skills and tactics. 
using martial arts. We got to get down with the primitive weaponry. We got to get down with basic knowledge how to properly and safely operate firearms. We will exercise our God-given right to defend ourselves and execute our duties out to correct any unjust actions um, that are waged on the waged on the people. Black power. Black power. Black power. I actually, I actually want to pat the back on the story about the thirteen-year-old and the little coward ass pig. So there are rumors going around that the girl were was acting unaccordingly, disrupting the class. Loud, and these are all the reports coming from the teacher who wanted her gone, and she didn't move. And so, because she didn't move, that's when you see the little racist ass pig by the name of Fields come in and treat her like a redheaded stepchild. Pretty much brutalized her, humiliated her, and like the brother said. The video's going around, and this this is going to require action. And the first action is to call the number that I'm going to pull up and to request that this pig, by the name of Fields, is terminated from his job. There's no way in hell it's justifiable that you felt it was necessary to just sling her around, to just treat her like, like an animal. So that's kind of what tonight's topic, two-part topic is going to be on. The methods, the call, the ethic practices, everything pertaining to the revolution, the meaning of the revolution, and how to conduct yourself. Black power. Black power. power for anybody who want to call in, you know what I'm saying? The pig's name is Ben Fields. His email is bfields at rcsd.net, and you can call the pig's number at 803-576-3000. The pig's name is Ben Fields. Uh, I would like to warn people to not do anything to to um, to incriminate yourself. However, um, let your voice be heard and exercise your First Amendment right and your God-given right to let him know that the people are very dissatisfied uh, that it's not enough to just let them know verbally. And like we said, we have to move forward and step, um, intensify the struggle to another level and make sure that we can uh, prevent these type of actions from happening again. Black power. Black power. Black power, indeed, brother. This this should never happen, and the fact that it's happening more than once and on a daily basis is a common practice. So the question I'm asking everybody right now is, what is the revolution? What is the definition of the revolution? The definition is, simply put, social change. We're trying to change how we are being viewed, handled, abused, murdered, raped, stolen, put in these industrial slave complexes. Every oppressive act that's been ever practiced on the black and the brown communities, we are talking about social change. We want to change how they're doing shit. And we're not just trying to change it by going to them and asking them to please stop. No, sir, please stop. Don't do this. No, God, no, please. We can't take no more. Fuck all that. We're talking about doing shit for ourselves. The fact that since they're not going to keep doing this, since they're going to keep undermining our calls, undermining our demands, they'll keep doing this shit. Instead of giving up and sitting in your ass and just taking it, how about actually preventing this shit? How about when you see a pig who is brutalizing somebody and you know that they are that they are innocent. While one person is recording, everybody else can, can be preventing it, protecting them. Do what you got to do to make sure that your fellow brothers and sisters can go to their families and whatnot. And that's part of the call that we've been trying to get out to the people is that we're not, we're not each other's enemies. And it is true that we are our own worst enemies, but we're not the enemies of each other. We're not the ones sitting up here 
just acting reckless, acting like complete animals. There's a reason why you have Cointel Pro attacks against the community even in 2015. It's a reason why you have all these laws that don't mean shit to the people, yet when it, when it pertains to us, we can't seem to get any form of a correct response to what's going on. There is no handling of the races and the pigs. It's not just the pigs that we're trying to fight. It's the racist as government, the racist as people who protect the government, the house Negroes who don't give a fuck about their own community, their own people, but want to stay here and act like they do, but can never seem to show up to the protest or show up to the call for action, but always want to make this a political battle to try to get up votes in numbers and make themselves seem like they're actually fucking important. So we're talking about social change. And I'm going to ask the comrades to to express what social change is to them and what they've noticed as far as the people who are calling themselves revolutionaries, the definition that you see them portraying out to the public, black power. Black power. Well, you know what I'm saying, to, to break down and just go through a basic preamble, you know what I'm saying, on what uh, – before we go into detail specifically about the social, like what is social change, because there got to be social change, there has to be an economic change, there has to be a political change, there has to be a spiritual, cultural change, there's a whole lot of change that has to be implemented along with the with, with revolution, uh, you know what I'm saying, this is what uh, Dr. Khalid Muhammad taught us, that, uh, you know what I'm saying, the revolution is complete constructive change. Uh, but we, we, I'm, I'm gonna get to that. So basically, you know, one of the main questions is, uh, and this is a basic overdraw of it, like a preamble. You should, you could say. Uh, so what is a revolutionary, right? What we want to do is break down an analysis on what revolution is. As black writers, you know, say a new generation Black Panther Party for self defense, who deem themselves as heirs of Malcolm X. Um, so we inherit. Him as um, a, a, a great teacher as well. You know, Malcolm X teaches us in a speech known as the Black Revolution and the Negro Revolution that people use the term revolution too loosely. And it has been sensationalized, um, popularized, romanticized, and fantasized. Uh, Malcolm said if you really take into account what revolution, what revolution is, um, what methods are necessary, um, the framework and the foundation of it all, uh, you'd probably change words, man. You'd probably hide out in the alley. He broke down that the so-called American Revolution, right, how it was about a war between the landlord and the landless and the so for so-called um, independence, right? And it was carried out by what? Bloodshed. Not ink on a piece of paper, uh, not a voice over a loudspeaker, but bloodshed, like he said, there was no love lost, was no compromise, there was no negotiation. He says that you haven't got a revolution without bloodshed, but you're afraid to bleed. So, you know what I'm saying, this goes back to when, uh, when people have no blood to bleed, when people are quick to uh, shed their blood over somebody stepping on their titty shoes or somebody even look at them, at them wrong. But um, when somebody opposes a, a, a threat to your um, your existence as a human being, supposed to how the uh, the, the police, uh, the modern day slave catchers, want to lock you up in these uh, concentration camps, um, playing their role as the occupying force in the community, and treating you less than a human being, and preserving you as property for the ruling class to profit off of. You know what I'm saying? You wouldn't defend yourself against that. You don't have no blood to bleed to go against that. You see berries and cherries when the police come through, you toss your burner and run. That's some coward ass shit. So this is why, you know, there's many poets that came up with things like, you know, last poets came up with a poem called uh, Niggas Are Scared of Revolution. You had um the great uh, Gil Scott Haran who said that um uh, a revolution will not be te televised. Um and both of them have very like similar messages within these poems. Um, in the last poets, you know, he talk about how niggas just want to party and bullshit, right? Party and bullshit and party and bullshit. And, and you know, bullshit. this is an accurate. 
criticism to be called out. I mean, I mean for real though, family. This 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 Macaulay Culkin looking cracker that ran up in the church in Charleston and killed nine people, shot ten. And niggas in the club popping bottles singing Kendrick Lamar talking about, we going to be all right. Yeah, nigga, we going to be all right. We going to be all right because black riders going to fight. It's funk on sight. It's funk all day and it's funk at night. It's war. Ain't going to be too much singing in the streets. It's going to be some swinging in the streets. Ain't going to be too much of these sit-ins and lie-ins and, and die-ins and reactionary suicide defense victim mentality. Don't get it twisted. I ain't, I ain't knocking you if you do that. I'm just saying it's time to take it to the next level. Or at least advocate or prepare for it. I mean, shit. I mean, I mean, if you think it's premature to advocate for people's ward, then what are you speaking on freedom for? You feel me? You just want to reform. That's what you really want. You feel me? And uh, if that's what you want, you know, keep revolution out your goddamn mouth. Dr. Khalid Muhammad told us that revolution is complete constructive change. Constru- uh, change in the economic system, change in the politics structure, change in the social um, interaction between each other, the change in the culture, change in everything. You know what I'm saying? Nothing must, the revolution turns over everything. It's 360 degrees. I would like to add in the five degrees inside of that that creates the year. A 365 degrees. You feel me? A struggle of changing it completely around from the circle and the inside of it. That's what revolutionary revolution means. It started off with us being in um, being in power and reigning and maintaining the balance um, and reciprocity and the natural laws of the universe. And now we have to resurrect that. You know what I'm saying? We have to go back to move forward so we can get back to where it, it really is about. You know what I'm saying? We have to restore uh, justice. The law, or we have to restore Ba'at, you know what I'm saying? That's basically what it is, and, you know, <clears throat> that's what we got to do, man. Basically, that's um, the the common thing when we revolution. If you can't consider yourself a revolutionary, if you don't believe that there has to be some type of change on every scale of relations between the people um, and relations between the land as well, the land got to be liberated, you know what I'm saying, by all means, black power. Black power, yes, indeed, corrective change. So what is corrective change? Corrective change is taking everything that you know is wrong and I want to say in a positive manner, handling your people not just with a particularly soft glove but a a soft, firm, revolutionary glove. That's allowing the people to come in not just as they are, uh, regardless of the background or whatever, let them come in however they want to come in. But once you step foot in this shit, you have to realize that you're not coming in to be who you are 24-7. You're coming in to change who you are and to help other folks change and to build up a nation of warriors. And I know we have Sister Mita online and we was going over this topic and we was talking about ethics, the practice of how to handle each other, whether it's a internal struggle, whether it's personal struggles, whether it's outside struggles. How are you handling the people that you're calling yourself, calling brothers and sisters? How are you talking to them when y'all not agreeing on a particular issue? How are you handling the people who may not fit the profile of the black leader. There are a lot of things that we have noticed that transpires, not just on social media, but when you talk to the people out in the communities, you hear a bunch of disrespectful shit towards the black leaders. And we're not going to agree with everything that they do or how they do things, but you have to understand that they're still fighting and they're fighting it how they see it working for them. And to be disrespectful towards them and each other, it it begs the question, what are you really changing if you're out here with a negative-ass type of thinking? Like Brother said, if you're not for a revolution, sit the fuck in the corner somewhere. Shut up talking about you want to change shit, but you just about as disrespectful and oppressive as the next motherfucker. Countless stories about leadership abusing power and 
people coming into this still trying to pimp it out, still trying to use it for their own personal benefits and gains and fucking and getting. Uh, this is this is this is not a trend. This is not like you sitting in line hours to buy a pair of shoes that you're not even gonna be playing basketball in. These ain't fucking Jordans and the iPhones and the laptop. This this ain't this ain't what revolution is. This is not. This is not a game. This is a serious matter. This is literally life and death. So how you handle your fellow brothers and sisters, whether it's in your organization or group or other organizations and group, you have to understand that corrective change is, since we seem to have a great understanding of what the problem is, when it comes to our people, let's build them up, let's nurture, let's empower them to build on what they already know, to give them the tools, like the brother said, to train them in self-defense and weaponry and to quit just sitting around talking a bunch of shit about what you would do if you was ever in a situation or talking shit about, oh, oh, I wish a motherfucker pick wood, uh, shoot him down and do all this shit. But when, it, when the time comes for you to sit there and act and be a part of the solution, you know where to be found. You're sitting there, oh, I can't come into work today. Oh, I don't feel good. Oh, no, I got stuff to do. Yeah, we understand that people have families and responsibilities outside of this. So we're not expecting for you to be here 24-7, but you got to put in the work. You got to sit here and actually be a part of the solution, not just speaking as if you are a part of the solution and not just sitting here abusing your position because – Quite simply put, you think it's the way to do shit, and it's not. Black power. Black power. So, I got a, I got a just like a quick question. And then, so based on what you just spoke about, you saying, do you think that um, black, us black folks um, have had a, a, a revolution? Based on what you just said. Uh, to the people, let me let me let me cover that family. All right, so basically, with with our uh, the elder or the ancestor, you know, what I'm saying, Doctor uh, Doctor Huey P. Newton told us that you know, what I'm saying, we still. I know this is a long time ago. This was in '66, but they threw a lot of um, they threw a lot of concessions at us to submerge the the the, the whole conditions of um. The, the conditions necessary to really um, to to really push like revolution the ne- the ne- the necessary methods to be used of uh, revolution which is uh, one of the main ones you know armed struggle you know what I'm saying um, and basically you know what I'm saying what he said is this is the prelude to the revolution it's still the prelude to the revolution based off of um, you know what I'm saying the, the amount of consciousness that has been raised. Um, there's certain duties, uh, certain duties that can't be executed correctly because the, uh, we, we wouldn't have the whole support of the people. You know what I'm saying? Um, and, and until we make, until we have it to to uh, to where there's a, a thousand more uh, liberation missions of the side of like that, you know what I'm saying? Then then we ain't in that position. However, um, the revolution just because it's the prelude of the revolution doesn't mean revolution isn't taking place. And I mean that speaking it into existence because uh, George uh, George Jonathan Jackson, the general, taught us that you know what I'm saying revolutionaries are to we're to basically manufacture and construct revolution. So we have to create the conditions um, accurately. You know, so we have to create the conditions. We can't just sit there and wait for the conditions to be right and, and wait and, and wait for the the, um, the system to to just drive us into uh, uh, back us all the way completely in the corner like that. Because what they'll do is to to suppress that whole fight and that struggle that will give people little civil rights concessions and equal opportunity and um, affirmative action. They'll give a black president. They put um they put together a whole 
aristocracy of black bourgeoisie and neo-colonial puppet positions for people to be falling to the illusion of inclusion. Um, and this could be used to backfire on them, you know what I'm saying? Because we have a, we're putting a, a, a beautiful position of um, sabotage internally with, the, uh, with this empire, you feel me? But... Uh, yeah, what we have to do is, because, you know, the people ain't, this is from not just George Jackson, but, you know what I'm saying, we got, got a lot of this game passed on from, you know, Chairman Mao, say tongue, man. You know, people ain't just going to come up to you and be like, let's fight. You know what I'm saying? You got to put people in a position. You got to drive. You got to um, agitate the enemy into lashing out on everybody so the people could obviously see that there's something got to be done. You know what I'm saying? You can't just wait for it. You have to let people know um, that, the only real answer to the reactionary violence to whatever social change you want to create is to create the apparatus uh, properly to, um, to 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 combat it with revolutionary violence. And the revolutionary violence, um, for people to understand and relate to revolutionary violence, they must first be educated um, into an acceptance that the fact that there's no other alternatives, or at least they got to know that that alternative is less inviting, less inviting than a fight. They got to know that, man, like they, they really, they have nothing to lose. You know what I'm saying? And nothing to lose but they change and everything to gain, freedom and some more. And, um, Revolution doesn't just, it's not, it doesn't, it's not limited to just um, any specific nation or any specific uh, community or colony or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Um, revolution isn't complete um, until um, imperialism, until capitalism, until colonialism is wiped off the face of not just the earth, uh, not just it got to be wiped off the face of the universe. You know what I'm saying? They colonizing the moon, and they talking about going to other uh, other planets. You know what I'm saying? So they they planning on getting up out of here and destroying this earth with it. You know what I'm saying? So what we got to do is we got to equip ourselves, man, with the proper science to combat this here. And you know what I'm saying? It's it's what um it's what is commonly known. It's a common theory. Um, in, in radical leftist um, socialist, a scientific socialist theory called permanent revolution. You know what I'm saying? It's been put, it's put on the map specifically from uh, from Leon Trotsky, but there's been um, the person who really put it into action for people to really understand what permanent revolution was was uh, was the great Che Guevara, man. And Che Guevara didn't stop well, with the Bolivarian Revolution and the Cuban Revolution. He took the struggle to Angola. He took the struggle uh, to Cuba. You know what I'm saying? He took the struggle with the, the African comrades that were struggling to rid themselves from imperialist um, entities. You know what I'm saying? So we have to take on that same mentality to put it into practice uh, and, and make sure it's not just something we just talk about. You know what I'm saying? Black power. Black power. Um, I want to uh, piggyback. Well, no. First of all, I want to say that um, on the uh, on revolution. Um, I said this before on on the radio station. A lot of people think um the revolution is on Facebook. The revolution is not going to be on Facebook. You're going to have to get dirty. Your hair is not going to be done. You, you're going to you're going to go without the 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 comfortabilities that you're used to. Um, are you really ready for this? Um, you know, a lot of our people are bourgeois now. Um, that's the reason why people say, you know, we would rather have thugs again because a lot of our people are, oh, you know, hands offish. Um, my first thing is that revolution starts in your mind. You understand what I mean? If you don't, if you don't have a change, uh, a change of your mental process processes, then we can't get to a physical revolution. A lot of people, um, also, their mind frames are fucked up. You know, they 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 talk one thing on Facebook, they talk one thing on Twitter, but then you go and you and you try to build with a person, um, in real life, and they they're not what they seem. A lot of us need to live the life that we are portraying. Okay, you need to be real with yourself, people. Um, so that's why I said the revolution starts in your mind. You as a person gotta get gotta get sick and tired. You as a person gotta see where you um contribute to white supremacy. Uh you know, black women with the weed. You are contributing to black, to, to to white supremacy by making them rich. Um, you know, um our men, uh, you know, doing crimes that uh you really don't have to do. 
um, putting yourself putting yourself in a predicament to get arrested. You're you're feeding white supremacy. So um, us as us, we need to individually we need to get ourselves right so that we can be right for our neighbors, which is our brothers and sisters. Um, saying that, um, I had another issue with somebody saying, well, um, how are we going to have a revolution if, 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 if nobody is prepared? This is the time to prepare people, okay? They're shooting us dead. Um, uh, they're shooting us dead for no reason, okay? Like I said before, we're not safe in these fake-ass churches. Um, we're not safe on the street. We're not safe in their jail. So where are we safe at? They want us to be stuck in our house, scared and afraid. That has never been the black race. Even when we was in slavery, you still had a, a numerous people um, rebelling. Uh, and, and yes, they and yes, some people died and everything like that. But that that did not stop people from trying to uh, cause a revolution to happen, to cause a, a, a political change. Um, so. My thing about it is that um, uh, at first um, I'm quoting uh, May Tung Tung on guerrilla warfare, um, quote, quote, unquote, people who live at substantive levels want want first things to be put first. They are not particularly interested in freedom of religion, freedom of press, freedom of enterprise, as we understand it, or secret ballot. Their needs... Their needs are more basic, land, tools, fertilizer, something better than rags for their children, houses to replace their shacks, freedom from police oppression, medical assistance, primary schools. Uh, this is not, this, these things that I just um, just said are not um, unreachable. This is things that uh, since they brought our asses here, most of us, that they are supposed to provide for us. Um, people say that racist, racism is dead, but um the, we as a people, meaning black people, we are the last to be hired. We have, um, in our communities, we have poor education. We have poor food, poor water. Um, so uh, on that note, uh, the, the community as a whole needs to get tired. It needs to get tired of being fed GMO food. you got to get tired of paying $500 for a shirt that only took a penny to make. You got to get tired of not getting the same jobs, uh, jobs at the places that y'all shop at. You got to get tired. And until that happens, um, and nothing is really going to happen, um, you know, it's a lot of brothers and sisters that want this revolution to happen. But without the strength of the people, we're never going to go nowhere. How do we get the strength of the people? We have to wake, we have to wake ourselves up. That it has to be a mental change within ourselves. Um, uh, quote unquote, I'm quoting um, Michael Tung again, where he states where he states that um, these uprisings are geared to go against the corrupt regime, imperialists, and colonists. These outbreaks may may not be initially be inspired or organized or led by a by a communist, meaning that the the revolution is probably not going to be supported. Just like how uh, people turn their back on Sister Ned, she wasn't supported, but she did something. She's in the limelight. It it causes the fucking Pecklewood and all and the 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 oppressors to feel shaky. Wait a minute, somebody is stirring the pot. This is the reason why Malcolm X was so beneficial to the black to black nationalists. For the simple fact, he stirred the pot. He made the Pecklewood. Scared. He made the cracker scared. You understand what I mean? And I don't mean uh, physically. I mean with his mental strength. And that's what we need. We need to uh, get out of our emotions, become mentally strong. And a lot of us, we dig ourselves a, a deeper hole when we when we when we're weakened. How are we weakened? By not being not saying who we say we are. If you're a revolutionary. Live like a revolutionary. You know that they're putting stuff in our food. Try your best to eat healthy. Do exercise and stuff like that. Live your life. Because the only way we're going to have this revolution, okay, is if we get our minds right. Black power. Black power, indeed. And I want to put emphasis on the fact that we we quote a lot of Mao Zedong. We quote a lot of Malcolm X and Hugh P. Newton and General George Jackson. 
And what the sister said was to live your life. They already lived their life. We can't talk about changing a thing, trying to be the next Malcolm X or Huey P or General George Jonathan Jackson or the next Mao Zedong. We can't live we can't we, we can't aspire to be them. They've already been them. They they were here, they were fighting a good fight, dead and gone. What we can do is take what they've taught us and implement it into our everyday lives, our everyday practice, our everyday um, self reflection. Because that's when you start to kind of open your eyes, open your third eye, and you start to see exactly what's been going on all this time. And for those who are not awakened and always finding some type of excuse for not wanting to get involved, oh, they're not doing it to me, Um, I'm not a slave, I can do what I want, Um, what about coming together and being one with each other outside of the black and brown race. And and what you start to realize is that's a tool. That's a fucking tool. They don't want you taking care of your own people. What they want you to do is to help you take care of them. And you have to understand that not everybody who's going to fight with you outside of the black and brown race is fighting the same fight. Poor white folks want more money. Poor black folks don't want to die and worry about getting out, going outside and having these pigs label them and build them and set them up and frame them and all types of bullshit that's been going on. And for those who steady and sit on same. Black Power? I think we might have lost them. Black lost Power, them. yeah, it looked like we lost them, family, so. You know what I'm saying? We, we, we most likely he'll be on a call back. We're going to get it back together again. But um, just to panther back, you know what I'm saying, on what sister was saying and what brother was, I think he was getting to, is uh, becoming the change that we want to see. You know what I'm saying? If you say you're uh, really about change and you want to you wanna do something about it, you know what I'm saying, you have to become that. You have to live that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, everything um, that's going on around you, you know what I'm saying, uh, it's, it's simultaneously like you can't wait. You can, I'm not telling people to wait until you get all the way right before you fight. What I'm saying is because once you ch- actively try to change the conditions that surround you, it it, it it has an effect on changing you too. And while you change yourself simultaneously with trying to change the conditions that surround you, um, you know what I'm saying? It 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 it, it has a, a effective way of working out on both sides. You know what I'm saying? You can't have one without the other. You can't wait to work on your you can't wait to change the conditions to just work on yourself, right? But then you can't um just work on yourself and then not work on changing the conditions. You know what I'm saying? That's individualism, that's cowardice, uh cow towing and preventing the, the, the struggle. You know what I'm saying? That's preventing it, that's postponing it. You know what I'm saying? We won't we for um for survival meaning revolution, meaning that, you know what I'm saying, it's nothing about we can't let um the the, the, the idea of, of survival pending revolution be survival postponing revolution. Uh, it has to be something where we continue to push our ideas through our services. You know what I'm saying? We don't want our services and our programs that we provide for the people to turn into reform because that's what, that will eliminate the whole purpose of what it's about. You know what I'm saying? We can't we can't allow ourselves to say make that same mistake. You know what I'm saying? It's always gonna be self defense. You know what I'm saying? We we ain't gonna drop self defense from our name. We cannot um we cannot water down um our theory, you know what I'm saying, or water down our message because we wanna be able to serve a wider a range of people because we can get more support from the white liberals or people who are in the um what what you would call uh philanthropists. Not philanthropists, philanthropists. Non profit cats that are trying to get a tax break 
uh, influence a lot of people who have these businesses to give them money for these programs. You know what I'm saying? Programs without the revolution just turns into charity, and it becomes a crutch for people. Uh, 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 it's a part of the, uh, another fascist element of the welfare state to pacify people and make things feel like it's all right. You know what I'm saying? It's not all right. So, um, you know what I'm saying? What we have to do is we have to create the conditions properly to combat this by putting our message, you know what I'm saying, propaganda. The enemy got propaganda, you know what I'm saying, we got propaganda. You know what I'm saying, and we have to keep our messages, whatever program or whatever thing we do. I don't care if it's a cooking class, you know what I'm saying, that cooking class better be um, be, be um, centered around um, strengthening the body and the mind to fight and destroy imperialism. There should be some songs or something or some kind of culture that is influencing, you know what I'm saying, destroying um, and wiping out the enemy. You know what I'm saying? Because that's what the original, that's what, what the, the free breakfast program was such a threat for. Because of what they was feeding the youth. They are feeding them food for thought, food for freedom fighting. You know what I'm saying? And that's what we have to do uh, with these with, with these programs um, alone. Because without it, you know what I'm saying, it becomes it, it becomes something that is just it's not beneficial. It becomes um, something of a, just a sensation of doing something for the cause of just doing it and forgetting the forgetting the fact that, you know what I'm saying, that we're at war here and we're trying to manufacture the, 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 the right vehicle to carry out the war. And we're not going to be successful without the support of the people. You know what I mean? I uh, believe we got uh, <clears throat> some of this urban guerrilla rap, revolutionary African propaganda, you know what I'm saying, um, to really drop on y'all in a minute, basically to really open up y'all eyes and y'all mind and reach the people who might not be interested in doing all of that reading, but influence them to want to get to study some of this theory and philosophy so we can put it into practice, you know what I'm saying? I want to reiterate, you know what I'm saying, when we talk about we're doing these things and all of these different programs that we provide for the people, we got to keep the the, the 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 revolutionary content of it and it can't be watered down at all. It got to be promoting not the African culture, but African warrior culture. You know what I'm saying? It has to be about destroying the enemy, or else it's just about getting along with the enemy. Uh, for sure. Let me see if this, uh, you know, what I'm saying if this music come on, and then we gonna keep it lit, laced up, and liberation struggle. Let's go. Uh oh, as we can see again, I said it looked like they mad. They ain't letting this shit play again. Here we go again, same old shit again. God damn. All right, family. While we while we look this up, here we go. That nigga slutter smut the riders on they on Facebook. Kept them slipping at these valleys and they act real shook. 24 7 on the ground, my comrades putting it work. New generation, the panther organizing the tunnel. Build with the brothers on the block, cause we the last ones that they got. Beat the people, bang on cops, political ed and break the lot. Couple times for the masses, build community defense. While these boot licking bougie ass niggas ride the fence. A youth was a boost, ain't no half ends in the movement. I got elders and soldiers, but still dedicated to it. It's a lifetime commitment, black riders gon' represent it. Flipping the tribalism with our OG like the prison, but thanks to General Top, I sent a thousand with the block. And nobody Gave a fuck, they assassinated pop. They like assassinated Malcolm, set them up to see Obama, but we coming for revenge. And I put that on my mama. Like they want to influence brutality. But how you gonna do that if you got no blood to bleed? And the same sense of niggas say they wanna be free. But how you gonna do that if you got no blood to bleed? No blood to bleed, niggas sweat and keep the G. But how you gonna do that if you got no blood to bleed? You can try to poke a hole in 
let ride up my speed But you never do that, cause you got no blood to bleed no blood I'm a rock to the day I'm buried To go out in the birth of flames My business as a revolutionary I'm the last of a dying breed Pray to God I live long enough to teach my seed Fulfilling my legacy Ride on the enemy, I'm peeping they plot But they won't catch the zip and niggas will start to kill my block These cowards fake as fuck They rat you out to they cop Smile your face But these niggas got me twisted like lies with love Well fake niggas I can't fuck with Niggas are shady nowadays So be careful who you run with Precision shots, only thing my guns fit Niggas be working for the state so they kill us or they hit Not every government agent wears a gun on his hip Strategically placed cooperatives to roam in the midst Gotta learn from my mistakes, separate the rip from the fake It's the reason why these boogies try to leave your niggas safe Say they wanna end police brutality But how you gon' do that if you got no blood to bleed In the same sense of single say they wanna be free But how you gon' do that if you got no blood to bleed No blood to bleed, niggas sweat they keep the G But how you gon' do that if you got no blood to bleed You can try to poke a hole in black rider for lots of feed But you never do that, cause you got no blood to bleed No blood to bleed Reactionary riot mentality. 
Now, this is a basic um, form that we developed, um, the Black Riders Liberation Party's mini-manual, right, to basically, you know, we dialectical materialists, right, and without be getting all philosophical with it, I'm going to show you by example on how we practice it or, or what we do so we can make a decision or differentiate and compare and contrast between this and that. Between on this hand we have this, and on this hand we have that. So on this hand we have the reactionary mentality, and on this hand we have the revolutionary mentality. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to break this down, you know what I'm saying, in, in that form. We have this, and then we have that. All right, so here we go. A revolutionary mentality in its maximum cultural development is uh, study-oriented. It reads, evaluates and debates books, newspapers, magazines, and scholarly journals, and accepts the challenge of education. A reactionary riot mentality in its survival cultural existence does not read or study after formal education, meaning like K-12. through um, They buy a few books, uh, read mainly newspapers, sports pages, or popular novels and magazines. A revolutionary mentality in its maximum cultural development are hard workers. They look for ways to actively work for self. They may hold down a job outside in order to sustain self, uh, sustain themselves and their family, but overall they are self-reliant. Um, the reactionary riot mentality in its, cult, in its survival cultural existence probably most likely works eight hours a day for someone else. Um, they're really uh, they're welfare conscious, and they have a get-it-for-nothing attitude. Uh, revolutionary mentality in its maximum cultural development. They stay organized, um, systematic, efficient, and diligent. And the reactionary riot mentality in its survival cultural existence is unsystematic and definitely not organized unless it's for somebody else. Uh, revolutionary mentality in its maximum cultural development is progressively collective, conscious of others, and cooperative. The reactionary riot mentality in its survival cultural existence is backwardly individualistic. I, me, mine mentality. The revolutionary um, mentality in its maximal, maximum cultural development. Um, they stay family oriented, uh, regards their mate as partner in the struggle, and they love children and the values trust in relationships. A reactionary riot mentality and survival cultural existence is not family orientated. They regard their mate as property. Um, they rate children very low and generally single-minded and does not want children or responsibility of a home life. Damn, that's so anti-African. Um, the revolutionary mentality in this maximum cultural development is land conscious and realize that the only thing that nobody is making is more land. You know what I'm saying? And a the reactionary, they're not land conscious. You know what I'm saying? Uh, a real revolution Nary is disciplined, strong, and unyielding. Reactionaries actively fight against discipline. Revolutionaries stay serious. They uh, practice fair play, order, and punctuality. They're honest and dependable. Reactionaries are non-serious the majority of the time. Uh, revolutionaries are very analytical and critical. Uh, the reactionary mindset does not require being critical or analytical. They prefer not to even think for themselves. Uh, real revolutionaries are frugal and buy mainly on a needs basis, and they save. Right? The reactionaries are usually consumer junkies. If it's advertised, he's got it. He cannot distinguish from wants and needs. A revolutionary social life is developmental and involves children. A reactionary love the social and the nightlife. They live for the weekend and love sexual conquest. You know what I'm saying? That's what he was talking about, the party and bullshit and party and bullshit. That's the reactionary shit. A revolutionaries are creatively aggressive and will dare the impossible if Somehow, it is possible. Reactionaries are self-defeatists. 
They have few goals other than the acquisition of material artifacts or things you can just grasp. We call it um, instant gratification. You know what I mean? Uh, revolutionaries respect elders. Revolutionaries respect the elders. Now, get, don't get us twisted. You know what I'm saying? Age don't make you an elder. Because in, in, in traditional African culture, being older or the oldest in one's group did not command the usual respect if one was lazy, a troublemaker, or a fool. And this is what we developed from our, our uh, general, general Taco uh, taking all capitalists out in African intercommunalism, too, um, titled, um, It's Easier to Criticize from the Sideline Than to Struggle from the Frontline. This is something that we analyze, though. See, but reactionaries, they don't have respect for elders. They usually put them in nursing homes and then just forget about them. See, revolutionaries, we dislike incompetence and mediocrity. Reactionaries gravitate toward incompetence and mediocrity. Revolutionaries fight against black-on-black -black crime and understand that the root of it is white-on-black crime. Reactionaries are usually either involved in black-on-black -black crime or is apathetic about the issue. Revolutionaries love black art, music, and literature if it promotes revolution. <laughs> Reactionaries love any kind of music of the generation. Whatever's hot, that's what they own. Whatever the radio's playing, that's what they listening to, and that's what they think is cool. Revolutionaries can give and follow instructions. See, we encourage experimentation and criticism. A reactionary riot mentality and the survival cultural existence can give instructions but cannot follow them. And they avoid and reject criticism. Revolutionaries are committed to black liberation, local, national, and internationally. Reactionaries are committed to self-liberation only. Revolutionaries are politically active, not crisis-oriented. We act on information rather than reacts and plans for the long term. We're alert and prepared for change. Reactionaries are usually politically inactive unless it's crisis-oriented, and then they react. Uh, revolutionaries are self-confident. They respect others regardless of race or, and culture to an extent. Uh, reactionaries are egotistical, um, ignorantly arrogant, and has little concept of culture. He feels he will forever be the racial underclass. That's that self-defeated shit. That's out. Uh, revolutionary mentality. And it's maximum cultural development. Understands the economic forces that control our lives on a local, national, and international level. Reactionaries are naive about economics. Unaware of the international nature of capitalism that touches all our souls. Revolutionaries are rational in decisions and actions. Reactionary riot mentality and survival cultural existence is subjective and emotional in decisions and actions. Revolutionaries reward merit and achievement. Reactionaries reward yes people. You know what I'm saying? And that's... The compare and contrast the 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 cold cold analysis of the maximum cultural development slash revolutionary mentality versus the survival cultural existence slash the reactionary riot mentality straight from the Black Riders Liberation Party mini manual Black Power Black Power indeed true indeed there is no there is no room for reactionary thinking. There is no room for incompetence when it comes to fighting for the people. And I stress this because in the beginning of the show, we talked about ethics and how you handle the people. So just because somebody doesn't know what you know don't mean there are beneath you and under you. We are all in the same boat. We are all in the same war. So your job as a teacher 
is to build, to to build them in the image of a revolutionary soldier, not reactionary soldier. Like Brother Ref said, those are in particular like yes men. And they are perpetrating what they say is, I guess, animalistic behavior inside of the struggles. So for every time you have a brother or a sister or even a young brother or sister or even the elders assassinated, the first thing reactionary thinking want to do is destroy some shit, root, rob from the poor. Now, I've kind of had a robber hood complex, whereas if you're going to do something, at least do it to the true enemies. At least fuck up their system, fuck up what they're doing, and have it benefit you at the end of the day. And I don't mean you as an individual. I mean you as a nation of people. So for every time that there's a brother and sister assassinated, whether they're younger, older, around our age, or whatever the bracket is, it doesn't even matter at the end of the day. Reactionary measures are not the way to do it. However, in some instances, it's a great tool. It's a great weapon. And I don't mean that in a counterproductive way. What I mean is for every time you see something going on that is not conducive to the black cause, to the black lives, to to the black community, push that shit out. Get the fuck away from it. Have it as far away from the people as you possibly can. Asking for the politicians and these pigs to do it is not going to help. You have to be the one to do the shit yourselves. And in doing so, you set the tone for the rest of your life. Every time that there's something that is going against the people and you're the first one out there speaking up against it, trying to fight it, you are creating ways of counteracting this, you're heading in the right direction. But it's also a mental thing that you have to build up too. So like we said in the beginning of the broadcast, if you're trying to build, trying to, and you see yourself as a revolutionary, Understand what you're saying. Understand what you're putting. The, understand the title that you're putting on yourself, because there's a lot of things inside that takes place that should never take place. And as destroyed as we are as people, we have to also recognize that with the mentalities that we're trying to destroy now, that the wrong step can change a whole course of action. If you're constantly abusing us, abusing your own people and they don't see a reason to get involved because of how you treat them, that's setting the whole that's – that's setting everything back, not just in your organization, but everybody who's on the same page trying to fight for the change. You have to understand that because whether you're a black man, a black woman, brown man, brown woman, it don't even matter. When you lose soldiers, that's, you're also losing morale. You're using the edge. You're using the fight. And they're sitting back and they're laughing and they're cracking jokes saying, look at these fucking idiots. Look at these fucking niggers. Look at what they're doing. And because you don't hear it, you don't think it's it's happening. But it's happening on a regular basis. It's happening every time they see brothers and sisters at each other. And like I said, it's not just social media. It's out here in reality. It's the fact that they're watching us torment ourselves. So, big ups to the brother for breaking down revolutionary and reactionary. Big ups, Black Power. Black Power. Um, I just want to uh, <laughs> bring up the fact that <clears throat> not every uh, revolutionary is going to know the right thing to do when they first uh, when they first uh, do what they do. Um, for uh, they might do things that um, you know, mistaken by mistake and stuff like that. But um, bringing up this situation, 
Um, everybody said she was wrong, this, that, and the third. People like that, we, when they make mistakes like that, we need to grab them, take hold of them, and put them under our weight instead of talking, um, you know, instead of talking bad, bad about them. We don't all come into this, into this revolutionary main, uh, mind frame, um, you know, perfect and knowing, the, and know, knowing how to, uh, you know, act accordingly. Some of us are going to make mistakes. Some of us, some of us are going to make a lot of mistakes. How we how we counteract that is when we see a person going on a path that looks kind of reactionary. We take that person, we talk to them, we try to um, teach them um, teach them the proper way. Um, a lot of the things with the system Ned could have been avoided if you know maybe she would have um, held out her hands to help, or someone from a black organization would have, um, you know, took the time to help the sister. So, again, um, like I said, not all of, not all of us come, in, come into this mind frame perfect, but uh, those that have, um, have uh, years in this need to take the younger folk, and I don't mean younger meaning age, I mean um, younger in the movement, and kind of take them under their wing and show them how to do things. That power. Black power, black power. Black power, black power. All power. True indeed. Um, I just wanted to, like, reiterate what Sister Mallory was speaking about real fast. I didn't mean to cut you off or anything like that. Um, That's why we do have to be careful on what type of organizations and what type of things that we associate ourselves with once you do become conscious or you become aware of the situations that's going on around you and you you beginning to come in and be in a revolutionary mind frame. Um, everybody that screams black power or say they love the people and everything, you know, they all they not they not for for you or for the, the liberation. They got their own type of agenda and their own plans and their own own just their own kind of way. This is the why we are in the the predicament that we are in now with our so called um media leaders. You know, we we kind of we we let them sit there and, and um, go in for us and speak for us. Oh, sorry, and let them speak for us, and they really not for us. They got their own, you know, their own agenda and what they doing. They want to power us in the media. The thing we have to do is we have to be able to each one and teach one and and be able to correct people when. And when we see somebody that want to be, want that's interested or even and just got like an inkling of what they want to do in, in the struggle, ooh, sorry, in the struggle, you would, um, I'm sorry, I love you. Black Power. Uh-oh. Sorry, I haven't touched this before. Uh, back to what I was saying. Um, that sister needed to be restocked before before that trouble even came about. So we do have to be able to surround ourselves with, with the proper proper people and, and check out these groups before we sign up. Know what you're signing up for. Find out what their ideologies is about. Find out what they stand up for. Don't just attach yourself or join something um, just because you want to be a part of something. You you really have to do your research and know that's just like with anything that you, you do in life. You want to research and, and find out what this person is about, what this job is about, what this education is about, you know. And the most important thing, you got to find out what is a political stance, what's their ideology, because that's important because the tools that, the stuff that we can't control, they are often um, used to oppress us. So stuff like voting and getting loans and all of that stuff, we we don't know about that stuff. So we got to find out and link ourselves you know, with people that know and is like-minded like you and, and kind of get a feel. And we don't make mistakes, but the, the good thing about making a mistake is you can learn from it and you can move on to a better situation. Okay, this this particular organization didn't work out, but I did take something out positive from it, and then I can go out and, 
and catch another sister or brother in the community and teach them something and say this is the correct way to handle this situation. Black power. Black Power, that's exactly the whole purpose for tonight's topic and tonight's broadcast is we're not trying to, in a sense, we're not trying to insult anyone or any practices. However, we're trying to correct the mistakes from within. We're trying to correct the the chaos that's that's within. It's impossible to change the world when you have so much hell and chaos going on on the inside that you have to constantly stop to correct it and then go back to the struggle, then stop to correct it, then go back to the struggle to stop. That's just fucking annoying. It's irritating and counterproductive. Make a mistake. Learn what you need to learn. Surround, like the sister said, surround yourself with people who are on the same page with you, who's going to empower you as you empower them. And they're going to be the spitting image of what you're trying to do and what y'all are trying to do together because we stress it throughout each and every broadcast, each and every broadcast that there are people who are far from revolutionary. They have their own agendas. They have their own cause. And when it comes to revolutionary struggle, and 2015 and the future, the past, however long you've been fighting a good fight, you have to understand that just because times are different, you have technology, you have steady, you have a steady evolution of technology and ways of controlling people. And if you if you ask me on as an individual, it's a bunch of lazy shit that's being created and is being targeted in our communities. And folks are taking advantage of that and trying to turn it into a weapon when you can't do that because the purpose of that creation is to disrupt, to distract, and to disenfranchise people. So what the sister is saying is whether it's Third Eye Emperor Skimmit, who we love and we support, and every time we do a show, you hear about it, and you hear our love and support for the sister and those who are in this fight. There is no such thing as a perfect human. So, therefore, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to be wrong at times. You're not going to know certain things. And that don't make you lesser than the next person who may know more because I might know more than Sister Nita who might know more than the sister Freeman, who might know than who might, who might know more than Brother Ralph, who might know more than anybody else, and instead of shitting on people and downing your own kind and making them feel like, well, damn, I'm oppressed, but not by these crackers and these racist ass pigs. My own people who look like me, who go through the same shit as I'm going through, is shitting on me. So now I have to turn to the people who show me love, which happens to be the enemy. See, that's the trick, or as I like to call it, the catch-22. When you're shitting on your own people to the point where they don't want to fuck with you and they go to the enemy, that's when you know shit is real bad. That's when you know you have to change your approach to this and change your thinking and change your practices because this is not like this is not like some type of trend where it's going to die out and it's going to always no. This shit is fucking serious. This is life and death. This is every every person's call who is sick and tired of being sick and tired of being sick and tired. So for a lot of us who are full of energy and and we seem to give off the energy that we are just hostile and negative, no. We take this shit so fucking serious that we have learned from the mistakes of the past. And a lot of folks say, well, the past is the past, and forget it and let it go. That's the same dumbass shit that these crackers and these government fuckboys and these pigs want you to do. 
forget the past, forget what happened, forget this. So when they start teaching your kids this shit, your kids are teaching you the poisonous American KKK type shit, and your first response is, well, damn, I ain't know that. Of course you're not going to know this shit because you don't even know who the fuck you are. But what you do know is what America wants you to believe. And every time something happens to the people, instead of you being angry, saying, well, they shouldn't have been out there doing that shit. You have no fucking clue what happens to these kids and these adults and the elderly who are constantly being assassinated. However, you have this reactionary slave type shit going on where for every for every horrible act that's been ever portrayed upon the people, you've had boot licking house negroes who who justify the shit by using the ideology of America. And that's not what we're trying to do it with this broadcast. What we're trying to do is to tell folks if you're truly serious about this shit and you really truly want to be a part of the solution. However, whatever language you use to get the message out, use it. But understand that we are here for each other and that we all have something to give to each other. So the Black the Black Rise Liberation Party might have one avenue of doing things that can teach the people. You may have another avenue to teach the people. But at the end of the day, we have so many avenues and ways and tactics of fighting this shit that now it's a matter of keeping them guessing. This shit is not. This shit is not going to be televised from now on. What we're going to do is we're going to play in the fucking shadows. We're going to play in the in the in the, the deepest, darkest shadows where they've already kept us. And everybody who knows about black or darkness knows that light comes from it. So there, we're going to win this shit as long as we understand that. As time as time changes, you cannot forget where you come from. You cannot forget why you just, you decided to become a revolutionary. And as the world turns, your mind should be turning. You should be empowering the people, not making each other feel like shit at the end of the day. I don't know if I'm the only one who feels this way, but it hurts me seeing brothers and sisters in tears and ready to give up because. Not the white man. We're used to the white man, the white woman, the politics. We're used to that shit. So we're used to somebody, oh, you coon, you jigaboo, you crap. We're used to that shit. But we, but, we, but for, for a lot of us, what we cannot grasp understanding with is how is it that you're for change and you're the most abusive person that they've ever experienced? There's some folks who experience oppression in different ways, and for a lot of us, it's not white folks doing shit to us. Well, I should say overtly doing shit to us. What's happening is we have other forms of oppression. We are going through economic crisis in our own homes and trying to survive and trying to maintain a household and trying to maintain it to the point where we have to fight the shit on the inside. For a lot of us, that's what we face. For others, it is overt. It's old cracker police pig type shit where it's, oh, you a jigaboo, you a nigger, you look like a thug, you look like you done stole some shit, or you look like you done beat down your girlfriend. Stuff. Like, that's, like, everybody has a different reason for doing this. So not just using your reason, but understand that for a lot of us, we're going to be able to relate to each other because of our stories, and it's not about relating to each other and making clicks and shit. No, we are a family. We are one. So to be a revolutionary and to understand what the revolution is, is to understand that your main priority is empowering the people to be self-reliant, to, be, to have the type of pride for themselves that doesn't allow outsiders to poison you every chance they get. Black power. Black power, yeah, it's an ongoing struggle, and you know what I'm saying? That's what happens. That's what it is, you know. Uh, it's not, it's not going to be no easy thing. Uh, some people will feel um, uh, feel weak at times and, uh, and and give up, you know what I mean? Um, freedom is hard work, man, you know what I'm saying? And um, what it is is that we go through a lot of issues, right, where it basically – 
it got to be a situation where Power to the people. So basically, what we 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 got going on is right. Hold on, right quick, family. Power <clears throat> to the people. We got to. What we also got to do is start breaking these psychological chains that we got to find out. We got to stop thinking that we not enslaved. Is this a new form of slavery? We got to stop with the. Uh, we don't. We don't. We. We gotta stop that. Uh, we don't know what's. Uh, it's not the white man no more. It's us. It's us. It's us. So, 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 so we, we definitely gotta do that. And I'm, I'm just glad that this is got a, a situation where Lisa's out to be with her baby at the end of the day. I'm glad. I'm glad of that. And I hope that she continues on doing what she's doing, and that's our reaching and teaching the, the children through the media. But and that's what we do. Also, have to do is start trying to obtain our own media, our own sources of media, and our own things, so that way we can't have have another situation like this happen. Because once we can control the media, control our own media in the way that they, the media and the people on the outside can can look at people. My, my yeah. Yeah, my bad, my bad family I had to not nah, um basically in the, just going through a little technical thing with the phone, but what I was trying to say um was was yeah, you know, there's ups and downs in this. Um the freedom fighting is is, is hard work. Um freedom isn't free. There's going to be a whole lot of issues that take place. There's going to be a lot of casualties. A lot of people go duck off before the casualties even take place. And we cannot allow ourselves to be demoralized and think that we are doing something wrong um, because people feel some type of um, way with their inferiority complex and um, and fear of freedom and what what takes place. Uh, when back in the plantation, uh, shadow slavery days, when um, – People would escape and run away in a lot of rebellions. Uh, when the Maroons would escape the plantation, um, you know, a lot of people um, got tired of, uh, actually got lazy and just like, man, I was better off just staying at the plantation. You know what I'm saying? Because freedom is hard work. It's hard work having to make your own food and always be on the go and always be this, this, that, and the third. You know what I'm saying? A revolutionary is a doomed man, a doomed woman. And to be black on top of that, you twice doom. So you can't um, affect. We can't anticipate or assume that um, that you know just because people come in and out of the ranks, or if people happen to be in a certain position of where you know what I'm saying of of of, of dissatisfaction. You know, this is not about satisfaction. Uh, complete. You know, what I'm saying satisfaction comes out comes with destroying the enemy. You take some out, you get some satisfaction. You get a lot out, you get a lot of satisfaction. But you take the whole lot out, you get complete satisfaction. And we all protract the struggle to get complete satisfaction. Complete satisfaction. You know what I'm saying? So. What we want to do is we want to get to the level of, you know what I mean, where the consciousness is spread to that level of where we can accurately um, carry these things out. You know what I'm saying? Um, I want to give a shout-out to all the comrades that's on the ground. You know what I'm saying? Right now, city, city, state, the state, block, the block, worldwide, black riders worldwide. You know what I'm saying? Don't give up the fight. Um, you what, what? This is a part of the practice. What you do is... You you have a meeting or whatever, you draw up your plans, you go out and you execute the plan or whatever, and then you come back. You know what I'm saying? You it, it is that that tedious process of of trial and error as you, as your experience and your education. And if you don't have time for that, family, y'all kind of ask everybody. We got to make time for that because the enemy is not sleeping. The enemy is not taking no breaks with us. You know what I'm saying? So we can't. Um, Get irritated, or we, we got to refrain from being um, pessimistic. We got to refrain from being um, impatient with our people. You know, what I'm saying having a 
deal with people and then deal with ourselves and then deal with everything at the same time. You know what I'm saying? It's, it, it is trial and error. It's going back. you got to go back to the drawing board all the time, especially when it comes to theory, practice, and his ideology, which is constantly in motion due to the changing of conditions um, internally and externally or inside and outside. You know what I'm saying? So we have to keep our morale up and know that, you know what I'm saying, the, whatever struggle – um, whatever struggles may come, it's an effect of what white supremacy has done. So we got to keep that in mind and not blame uh, our own people or not blame, um, you know what I'm saying, yourself, you feel me, for the shortcomings and um, shit that a lot of people just ain't ready for. This shit is not no fun thing, you know what I'm saying, it's, 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 it's real difficult. And we got the illusion of inclusion. And people think it's more better, so we got a, a harder, we got a dip more of a difficult task. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I guess we could go into another one of these, uh, another uh, some of this music. You know what I'm saying? It's, uh, some of this revolutionary African propaganda, this urban guerrilla rap. And you know what I'm saying? We can see if it pulls up. And let's keep it rocking. Right, so it seems like we got a little bit of a yeah. They they hating on us again. Well, whatever we gonna say before we close, cause we got a few little minutes left. I'm just gonna go over basically a few paragraphs of a quote, right? Uh, not even too long, really, with it. Just to break down, you know, what I'm saying with uh, you know, what I'm saying one of our ancestors, you know, what I'm saying Doctor uh, Doctor Huey P. Newton, uh, laying out a foundation. This is around the 1967. Uh, this is a correct handling of revolution. Uh, we have evolved it and directed it into the correct uh, to confrontational politics when we applied this, because uh, we were talking about um, developing these things. And, you know, people don't just come into come into it revolutionary, and people go have some of them traits. Uh, we weren't mentioning them traits to um, to to belittle them or in a condescending manner. However, uh, what we got to do is we got to create something where we could provide an example um, for them, you know, an example for them to see. Um, and, it, and it comes with practice. It is not. It don't come from just the the study of it alone. You know what I'm saying? And he breaks it down in correct handling a revolution, right? He says, when people learn that it is no longer advantageous for them to resist by going out into the streets in large numbers, and when they see the advantage of the activities of a guerrilla warfare method, they will quickly follow this example. Um, and then he goes on to say, when the vanguard group destroys the machinery of the oppressor by dealing with him in small groups of three or four, then escapes the might of the oppressor, the masses will be impressed and more likely to adhere to this correct strategy. When the masses hear that the Gestapo pigs or the policemen has been executed while sipping a coffee at a counter and the revolutionary executioners fled without being traced, the masses will see the validity of this kind of resistance. Um, there are three ways uh, one can learn. They learn through study, they learn through observation, and experience. Since the black community is composed basically of activists, uh, observation of our participation and activity are the principle of the ways the community learns. To learn by studying is good. To learn by experience is better. Because the black community is not a reading community, it is very important that the Vanguard group be essentially activist. Without this knowledge of the black community, a black revolution in racist America is impossible. The main purpose, and this, he goes on another one, he said, the main purpose of the Vanguard group should be to raise the consciousness of the masses through education. And he goes on explaining what exactly a Vanguard group or a Vanguard party is or what it does. A vanguard party is never underground in the beginning of its existence. Let me repeat that. A vanguard party is never underground in the beginning of its existence. That would limit its effectiveness and educational goals. How can you teach the people if the people do not know and respect you? The party must exist above ground as long as the dog power structure will allow. And hopefully, when the p party is forced to go underground, the party's message will already have been put across to the people. 
the Vanguard Party's activities on the surface will necessarily be short-lived. Thus, the party must make a tremendous impact upon the people before it is driven into secrecy. By that time, the people will already know uh, the party exists and will seek further information about its activities if it is driven underground. Many would-be revolutionaries uh, work under the fallacious notion that the Vanguard Party should be a secret organization, which the power structure should know nothing about, and the masses know nothing about except for occasional letters that come to their homes by night. Underground parties cannot distribute leaflets announcing an underground meeting, and such contradictions and inconsistencies are not recognized by these so-called revolutionaries. They are, in fact, afraid of the very dangers they are asking people to confront. These so-called revolutionaries want the people to say what they themselves are afraid to say, to do what they themselves are afraid to do. That kind of revolutionary is a coward and a hypocrite. A true revolutionary realized that if he is sincere, death is imminent. The things he is saying and doing are extremely dangerous. Without this realization, it is pointless to proceed as a revolutionary. And this is straight from Dr. Huey P. Newton, man, back in 67. I know things have changed, but, you know what I'm saying? A lot of that, those are uh, concrete, uh, concrete analysis of, you know what I'm saying, things that still exist to this day of what got to be the, the proper way, proper methods of, um, of handling and operating, you know what I'm saying, manufacturing revolution. So for I got a I got a I got a shot I got a, I got I got a shoot at y'all now for everybody who was like uh, discredited uh, Sister Latasha uh, Latasha Ned or um, the, uh, the the Third Eye Empress segment you know what I'm saying that was um, backbiting and criticizing her for doing what she do uh, basically what Dr. Huey P. Newton said y'all just um, putting her shaming her or guilting her because the difference between shame and guilt now putting the guilt on her without proper criticism because she's saying some shit that you're scared to say. And she's willing to put uh, put certain shit on blast that you ain't ready to do. You know what I'm saying? Quit trying to make it seem like everything of this revolution is something hidden. You know what I'm saying? The enemy knows what you're doing no matter how much you hide or not. There is no more privacy uh, with modern technology. There is no more privacy with modern technology. You know what I'm saying? So, basically... Um, when people come up with these unprincipled criticisms um, and spiteful, um, reject and uh, discredit and disassociate themselves whenever people get a, uh, get repressed, obviously because the system takes them as a threat. You know what I'm saying? Back in the day, uh, I'm gonna call you like I'm gonna call it how uh, how Dr. Huey P. Newton would call it. it you a coward, a hypocrite. You know what I'm saying? And uh, and uh, and, and it's counter revolutionary. You know what I'm saying? Straight up, I'm going to call it out just how, in, in, in the honor and the spirit of Dr. Huey P. Newton, you know what I'm saying? A real revolution will put an example of what they need to see, you know what I'm saying? So what? You feel me? So what? Whatever it might have been. You had any criticism, you feel me? You We do that behind <clears throat> behind closed doors, you feel me, when we build it, you know what I'm saying? But to publicly denounce somebody because they doing something that you ain't ready to do, because you want to make it seem like there's something hidden, you know what I'm saying? That's some cowardice bullshit, and I'm going to call it how I see it. Black power. Black power. Hold on, matter of fact, before I go, hold on. So, yeah, this is a real deal, though. You feel me? Please. Please, family, join the Black Riders, you know what I'm saying? Be a panther at war for the hearts and minds of the people. You know what I mean? Inbox on the, our Gmail, blackriders1996 at gmail.com. If you don't want to be... Um, if you don't want your actions and your revolutionary rage to be discredited and um dis and people will disassociate you. If you want support when you get repressed and you know what I'm saying, you you want the the real deal, you know what I'm saying, come to Black Riders, man. We ain't finna reject it. We accept it. You know what I'm saying? We accept everything that comes with it and um you know what I'm saying, and we'll correct it when it is needed, and we'll critique it and discipline it when it is needed. But that's something internally that nobody ha- that the outside um spectators on the sideline has don't don't need to know about. Black power. Black Power, Black Power, and to pass it back on earlier in the show, if you're in the Chicagoland area, if you're in the Illinois area, 
come out to the 94th and the Dan Ryan Expressway, 4 to 7 p.m. Again, this is 97th and the Dan Ryan in Chicago, Illinois, Thursday from 4 to 7 p.m. This is a call to action. There is a store that likes to call black women hoes and bitches and physically threaten them. And if you're in Chicago and you're trying to change things and you don't know the way to go, come out Thursday, 4 to 7. We'll be there in full support. Black Power. Black Power family, you heard the brother. And once again, you feel me, I got a little bit carried away. Please inbox um, Black Riders 1996 at gmail.com. That's B L A C K R I D E R S at gmail.com. You know what I'm saying? You can also reach us at the mailbox, the P.O. Box um, 8297. Los Angeles, California, 90008. You know, you can call the number 602-842-2757. Or contact BRLP, or you can just go to our Facebook page, like Black Riders Liberation Party. Um, and you can go to, um, if you're in the Oakland area, go to um, BRLP. Um, B-R-L-P Oakland at gmail.com. That's B-R-L-P O-A-K-L-A-N-D at gmail.com. Overall, just please, family, get with it. Black Riders Liberation Party. B-L-A-C-K-R-I-D-R-S. D-E-R-S, my bad. 1996 at gmail.com. I'm saying Black Power, all power to the people. Any last comments, family? Before we go, promotion, anything. Yes, I just got a quick comment. Um, for those in Chicago, for those who are out over the weekend, for those who are trying to become a part of the solution, you heard the email. That's the universal email. If you're in Chicago, you'll be passed through the right channels. If you're on social media, if you're on social media Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, you can follow the Black Riders Liberation Party Chicago chapter on there. If you want to get involved with any movement, you can hit us up on Facebook, Pass the Power Radio, Black Riders Liberation Party groups, individual messages. We are not we, we are not afraid to come see you. We are not afraid to fight the enemy. We are not afraid to doubt for this shit because at the end of the day I'd rather die fighting than down my knees. Black power. Black power also please uh, check out uh, make a donation toward our newspaper, the African Intercommunal News Service. Go to crowdrise dot com and search Black Riders. Make a donation, support our the lifeblood of our party and our message, uh, so we can be able to uh, spread the message of self determination and self defense. Black power. So with that being said, Hopefully, those listening, those tuning in, you enjoy the show. Hopefully, you grab the important aspects of what we're trying to do today. I should say today. This is Lori Grenier. You've seen me on Shark Tank. I'm always hearing from business owners who just can't get the money they need to grow. It's time for funding to catch up to the 21st century. It's time for Cabbage. Fill out the application online and you'll get a decision in minutes and could have access to a line of credit of up to $100,000. No waiting, no hassle. Cabbage is the real deal, A-plus rated by the Better Business Bureau and twice a Forbes Top 100 company. So go to Cabbage.com. That's Cabbage with a K, K K-A-B-B-A-G-E, or call 888-CABBAGE.